Because a project car is never really done, we are back in the Tuesday garage to fix this electric fan setup once and for all. Buongiorno, aloha, hello, good afternoon, good morning, or whatever it is, where are you at, salutations. We are back in the Tuesday Garage. It has been a very, very long time since the last time we were together in the Tuesday Garage. I've been wrapping up school and it has been the most intense semester out of everything I've ever had. Man, I've just had no time for pretty much anything except for relaxing, man, just relaxing. Not doing anything when I basically had time to not do anything. So that's what I've been doing. As some of you know, this has been my last semester. In fact, my last day of school is Monday, which was yesterday. It's not yet yesterday, but when you see this, it'll been, have been yesterday. So <laughs> I'm done with school, man. I'm done with school. Oh, I'm so freaking excited, dude. I'm graduating. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really, really jazzed. Now that all that's over, I have a little bit of time back to myself. And today I need to fix this electric fan. One of the last times we were together, we installed a brand new circuit. I actually upgraded the circuit and believe it or not, it made it worse. I'm doing a little bit of research. It's because I'm basically letting more power through the circuit, which creates an even bigger spike. And that, uh, that's kind of, sucked man just to kind of recap if you don't know when the electric fan kicks on there would be like a little power spike almost as if i was tapping the brakes really fast or the fuel injectors just cut out that's not good that's not good stuff i've been trying to look for solutions finally settled on the company called durali this is what we are going to install it is their smart electric fan controller in the majority of swaps most people what they'll do is they'll wire an electric fan up to their car they'll put it either on a switch or in my case we wired it into the halt ECU so that when the ECU saw a temperature signal from the normal engine temperature sensor set at 192 degrees or something, the fan would kick on. It would stay on until it got to a temperature that I also set inside the ECU and then it would turn off. That is how the majority of people who do engine swaps set up their fan control. It's on, it's off, it's 100% or it's 0%. And that is what creates the spike. Now the spike is actually known as inrush. The initial inrush of electrical draw in the form of current that's being pulled on the battery. Because this is a super high performance fan, it has an, a massive amount of inrush. And because we're using a small racing type battery, it just can't handle that inrush, even though it can handle all the other electrical things that we have going on. To solve this, the best thing to do is find a unit or a module or some other way of creating a slow start condition for the fan. Meaning when it's time for the fan to turn on, it slowly starts at 1% power and amp its way up over a period of time until it gets to the percentage it needs to be to be running. Maybe that's 100%, maybe it's less. There are a lot of different modules out there. I settled on the Durali unit and that's what we're gonna use. It actually works on a temperature base. At a certain temperature, it's gonna go ahead and kick itself on very slowly, ramping up with no inrush that should be felt whatsoever. It will get itself to 60% and it will just kind of hold it there and it will actually fluctuate its temperature between zero and 100% just based on the temperature that it's reading in a constant. So instead of the, the car gets hot, fan comes on, car cools down, fan goes off, the fan will just be on at say 160 degrees or more and it will just either be working at like a slow 10% and it will ramp up as it needs to as the car gets hotter and it will slow down as the car needs to as the car gets cooler. It's a more intelligent fan control. It will also keep it from like the car getting into a super hot condition and needing a massive cool down. It should just kind of help regulate the temperature overall. I am really excited about that. So I need to go ahead and remove all of the circuitry that we have in there right now for the fan control so we can make room for the new Durali circuit. Once I get all that removed, I'll be back with you and we'll talk about the way forward as we start to put this circuit in and this new piece of equipment. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, all the old circuit is removed. I just put this thing in, man, but it's all pulled out. Everything is good to go. The kit supplies all this brand new wiring that will go straight to the battery. And this is actually the temperature sensor and I'll talk more about this in just a second. So I went right round and round about where to mount this thing up and I thought about frame rail and I'm trying to keep it out of water, road grime and all that other muck that possibly could just cause issues. So I have decided I'm gonna mount it right here on top of the radiator. I'm gonna use some method of mounting it right here under the nose panel, free from anything. There is no way that anything gets in here. This is probably one of the cleanest, driest, safest places in the car. It'll be right next to the fan. It'll have easy access here to that wiring. It'll also 
give me easier access in the future for any adjustments or whatever because I don't want to put it in such a place that it just becomes a pain in the ass to try and like maintain or fine tune or whatever. So that's where we're going to put it. And uh, let me show you more about the circuit and about this device. Here is a quick look at just everything that's going on with this. This is the device here. It's going to be connected to the battery. It needs to be connected directly to the battery, both positive and negatively. The sensor here actually adheres to the hot side of the radiator. It reads right off the end tank temperature right at the outlet of the radiator. And that connects here to the controller as well. Obviously you connect up the fans here and it's all good to go. Now this optional override circuit, that is where we're actually going to still include the Haltech ECU. This is meant to be connected to maybe your air conditioning or just another switch. So if all of a sudden your car starts to overheat, you just flip the switch on, it'll trigger the controller, it'll override the sensor that's connected to the radiator. If the fan controller is not doing its job or it errors out and the ECU sees that the car is getting too hot, it'll go ahead and open the circuit and click the fan on. So that's what we're gonna do, man. And that kind of keeps the old and the new and all the circuits and all the safeguards and all the safety and all the things that we need in place to make sure that this thing's working good to go. I've gotta get this wiring done, make sure the sensor, all the things and what's and doot, 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 all that stuff. Let me go ahead and kind of get the wiring in place and then once we start to kind of really get everything hooked up, I'll be back with you and we'll talk about the way ahead and get in some testing. Everything is together pretty straightforward as with any wiring. It's just a matter of like checking, double checking and making sure you're reading instructions. But yeah, everything's wired up and everything is ready to go. Here is all the circuitry coming together in the place it needs to. Everything's already tucked, everything's zip tied, everything's good to go. This is gonna take a while to warm up, but I'm gonna go ahead and start the car. In the meantime, the instructions actually say you should use that auxiliary override to give the car a test. Now, we don't have an AC we can just flip on and I didn't wire this to just a switch. I wired it to the ECU. I now have my laptop set up here. So what I'm gonna do is once I get the car fired up, I'll actually go into the settings. I'll change the setting of the temperature for the thermo switch so that the car decides to go ahead and turn the temperature on at say 90 degrees. And uh, that should just basically act like a hard switch to flip it on and off. Yeah, let's get it started and let's check it out. temperature to 100. Let's set that to 90. Okay, there was a bog. The fan did not come on. Interesting. Interesting. Alright, let me play with this a little bit and see what I can figure out. Alright, as you can probably hear, the fan is working now and it is slowly ramping up. I made a complete bonehead mistake. I actually forgot to attach the positive to the thing. But it's working now, but it's working at a temperature a little too low. So right now we're only at 148 degrees and the fan is going. And, uh, and that's okay because there's actually, right there is a little adjustment potentiometer so I can set what temperature I want this fan to actually do stuff. So I'm gonna mess with that now and uh, I'll be right back. This is, this is freaking awesome, man. This is awesome. The fan is actually going right now and you can't, you can't even hear it, man. And when it came on, if I wasn't looking at it, I wouldn't have known that it even came on. It's, it's awesome. It caused no inrush whatsoever. And man, I don't know if you can see, Oh man, it's spinning right now. It's like ever so quietly spinning. And the car, it came on. It actually started going around 179 degrees. Right now the car is chilling at 172, 173. And again, you can't even hear the fan. 
That's awesome. That's freaking awesome, man. I'm gonna see where this thing kind of starts to stabilize at. And then once, uh, once I get to a temperature that it seems to normalize uh, while the car is idling, then I'll go ahead and adjust that adjustment screw and uh, set the temperature what we want the car to kind of just like be at, kind of chilling. So it turns out the Haltech ECU was causing a constant override uh, condition. So I had to disconnect the wire from the Haltech and then the fan controller started working just like it was supposed to do. So that's super awesome. Look at that, 171. And again, you could ever so quietly hear the whining, but it is definitely not like back in the day would woo woo, you know, like on and off, dude. It's intelligent fan control, man. This is this is a game changer for the RBZ. Game changer. Getting rid of the inrush, having a more constant temperature, not letting this thing like go through these crazy heat cycles, and hopefully when we're actually driving. This thing, because what it should do is even when we're driving, yeah, we're catching air as it's going through the radiator, but this thing should also start to ramp up the speed of the fan up to 100% if needed to keep it the car at a more constant temp, again, rather than that high temp, low temp, high temp, low temp. So I'm freaking jazzed. This is such a win. I definitely want to go out and drive, but I have to finish some mounting and just all the other things. This is exciting. All right, so it's chilling at 172, which is great. If I remember right, our Nismo thermostat is 170 degree thermostat. So that means we're basically maintaining thermostat temperature, which is, that is freaking perfect, man. That is exactly where we want to be. However, I don't want the thermostat, I don't want to be so close that the thermostat wants to open and close, open and close. So yeah. It'll come in time. Anyway, I'm gonna button a few things up, be back with you to kind of wrap things up. Everything's done, I've buttoned everything up, but I'm gonna call it a day. I need to do a little bit more research on the Haltech and why it, keeping it in a constant on condition. One thing to note is the way the Haltech was working before is it was switching a relay. Once it switched that relay, allowed power to get through to the fan. I could have swore it was a positive signal that was switching the relay to closed, but this is showing that there's a positive signal there at all times. So I really don't know what the deal is. I just need to do a little bit more research. In the meantime, I'm just gonna kind of leave it the way it is. If anything, what I'll probably do is I'll tap into the existing wiring for the car for the fog lights because we no longer have fog lights. Use the actual car's fog light switch as the override for the fan. That way I don't have to create any additional wiring, no extra switches, everything looks clean, everything looks natural. And yeah, that's just the way BC do, man. One thing of concern, and I've already tried to call Durali, but it's Saturday and they're closed, is that even when I switch the car off, the fan continued to run and it ran all the way until it got the car down to a cool temp like 167. That doesn't seem like a bad thing, but it just took a long time, like maybe three to five minutes. That's three to five minutes that is additional drain on the battery when the alternator's not running to charge it. When I went to start the car back up, it was at 11.8 volts and that's, that's not a big deal sitting here in the garage. But if you know, the most intense time, the time that a car is its hottest is right after you shut it off from driving. You could be at 180 degrees when you're shut your car off three minutes, five minutes later, it's gonna be about 212, 210. It spikes, it spikes hot in the radiator itself. The one thing I don't wanna do is have to wait for that kind of temperature to come down and then I have a dead battery when I try to leave. So I'm gonna contact him and find out. Last thing I need to do is just double side tape this because I don't want to screw or rivet and that'll also provide a little extra like insulation for vibration. So that is good to go and everything is hunky dory there. Overall, extremely satisfied with this. Much smarter, much more intelligent fan control, getting rid of that inrush that's been plaguing us for so long. Now we should have more constant cool temperatures that stay right around where we really want our thermostat temperature to be. That just equals performance, man. That equals performance. The car's not gonna be working as hard because the fan's not gonna be all out 100%, and this should prolong the life of the fan in general. Lots of crazy things are happening. Like I said, Monday is my last official day of school. My graduation is right on the horizon. And then as you know, lots of things are changing. Continue to be patient with me. Those of you who are OG, 
please, I really appreciate your constant support. And those of you who are new, go back and see what you've missed. Let me know what you want to see next. If you guys remember Tom from Custom Import Arts, he found me a Skyline, pretty sweet R33. I told him, dude, I really got to figure out what my new house is going to look like, if I'm going to have a garage, if I'm going to have the space, et cetera, et cetera. But there's already an R33 waiting. We'll see what, what that brings. I kind of want to get away from the Skyline thing. I'd really like to go GTIR, but we'll see what happens. There's some good things coming over the next month. I promise you. I promise you. I've got, I got a lot more time on my hands now. So I'll see you then. Until next time, ciao a tutti and aloha. Bye-bye. Just a little video after the video. I was cooking some lunch on the phone with my dad. He was asking me if I've gotten the issues with my RBZ sorted out. I told him I got the fan controller in and it's freaking amazing, but this is an issue I'm having. And then it was like light bulb. Light bulb freaking came on in my head and instantly I figured out exactly what I'm gonna do about the fan controller staying on after the fact. Once the ignition is turned off, it's easy. It's a simple freaking relay, man. The same relay that we had used before, I'm gonna go ahead and put that relay back on the main ignition circuit. So when the key is shut off, it will close the relay and no more power will come straight from the battery and the fan will just turn off. So too easy, man, too easy. That's what I'm gonna do. All good and all fine. Not gonna do it now, I'll do it later. I'll see you later. All right, video after the video after the video. Yes, so. I got all the wiring done, man. I'm actually pretty stoked about how it all turned out. Um, I'm just waiting for the fan to turn on, and then once it does, we'll shut the car off and see how it works out. But let me show you what I ended up doing. Way back here in this corner, I actually reused the 40 amp relay that we had from before. Instead of putting the relay on a hot circuit, I put it through a ground. The relay enables the ground that wouldn't otherwise be there, just completing the circuit, and it works the same as completing the hot side of the circuit. I had to access a 12 volt switched voltage, a 12 volt switch, yes, one of those. And uh, it wasn't too hard, I actually ran right through the firewall where all the rest of my wires are, and right at the ECU, because I'm using a wiring specialties harness, right at the ECU is the console port, and there is actually a 12 volt switched voltage on the console port. So I verified it, clicked the relay, it did, everything's good to go. So yeah, this should, now when it's running, once the ignition switched off and that relay closes back up, it will cut the signal to the ground, which will then cut the power to the unit, which is just like switching the power off, you're just switching the ground off, it's the same thing. She's taking her sweet time warming up. It looks like about another five degrees about another five degrees and she'll come on. And there it goes, nice and slow. Absolutely no electrical impact to the engine whatsoever, man. Yep, I can feel it, it's starting to push the hot air. Oh yeah. Yeah, no hesitation in the engine, no hiccup, nothing when it's switched on. It just came on nice and easy, breezy, lemon squeezy, and that's freaking super, super exciting. So, we don't have to wait for it to get up to temperature or have it run for a long time. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the car off, and at that time, this thing should just stop. And if it did, success, and then we're done. I promise. and the fan is off. The fan is off and it has stopped, man. Every, <laughs> that's great, it works. So now I just need to figure out the way to install that override, just in the case of emergencies. Worst case scenario, if I can't get the hall tech to do it, I'm just gonna wire right into my fog light switch because I don't have fog lights anymore and I'll just be able to click it on when I notice the car is getting too hot. So yeah, now officially, dude, super success, intelligent fan control. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.